In a casino, the back of a pickup, or on top of a transformer, the steamiest Hollywood makeout sessions might just be the ones that don't require any acting. So who's got the skills to sweep these stars off their feet? Gwyneth Paltrow has made a lot of romantic movies featuring memorable kisses. She even kissed Shakespeare in Shakespeare in Love, a movie so charming, romantic, and kiss-rich that it won her an Oscar for Best Actress. But the film that Paltrow did as a lark is the one that produced the Conscious Uncoupler's most highly regarded personal lip lock moment. During a 2011 episode of The Rachel Ray Show, Paltrow said, I did a little cameo once at the beginning of Austin Powers 3, I think it was, and I got to make out with Tom Cruise. In a sequence for Austin Powers, and gold member, Cruz took over for Mike Myers as Austin Powers for a quick minute, and Paltrow played a send-up of a Bond girl named Dixie Normus. Well, Miss Normus, shall we shag now or shag later? Then they kiss, because Austin Powers is irresistible no matter who is playing him. Paltrow proclaimed Cruz to be, quote, an amazing kisser. There wasn't much time for making out in the 1994 movie Speed, which begins aboard a bus that will explode if its speedometer falls below 50 miles per hour. But after the action moved to an ill-fated train car, Sandra Bullock and Keanu Reeves certainly didn't speed through their passionate kissing scene. Bullock would later lock lips with the likes of Chris O'Donnell, Viggo Mortensen, and Ryan Reynolds. But while playing a round of burning questions on The Ellen DeGeneres Show, she confessed that the kiss with Reeves tops her list. She also revealed that her co-star was her first celeb crush. In another appearance on The Ellen DeGeneres Show, Bullock admitted that crushing on her co-star made filming with him a challenge, saying that she would giggle whenever he looked at her. The actors never dated, but Bullock told Esquire that they forged an enduring friendship. Unfortunately, this special bond made Bullock less fond of the romantic scenes she and Reeves filmed when they reunited for the 2006 movie The Lake House. Bullock told AP Entertainment, If you are kissing someone you would think of as your brother, believe me, there is a mouthwashing process that happens after. But in this case, it's it's a lot of love, and it could be like family, but you don't really want to go there, because then it would be a little incestuous when you are watching it on screen. The way Vin Diesel tells it, there was fuel, there was fire, and Charlize Theron was burning with desire when they kissed on screen in the 2017 action film The Fate of the Furious. But maybe those gasoline fumes made him misread his co-star's demeanor. Speaking to USA Today, Diesel revealed that their kiss had him riding high. I was, I was definitely not complaining. Charlize Theron is not a bad kissing partner to have. There, there are worse things that, you, that can happen to you. As for how he believed Theron felt about shooting the scene, he asserted, do I know she enjoyed it? Oh my god, yeah, a kiss can't lie. Lips don't lie. She owned it. But Theron seemed baffled by Diesel's recollection of the kiss when she appeared on The Ellen DeGeneres Show. As she pointed out, it was supposed to be unpleasant for Dom, who did not consent to it. She said, as he should have, his character is just standing there frozen, like a dead fish. As for Diesel's claim that she enjoyed herself, Theron's response was simple. I like a little bit more movement in my men. Let's go. When Ellen read Theron's comments to Diesel during his appearance on the show, the stunned star hopped out of his seat and asked the audience, Do I look like a dead fish? Years before Shia LaBeouf was making headlines for all the wrong reasons, the Transformers franchise was helping the actor establish himself as an in-demand leading man. His co-star in two of the movies, Megan Fox, also gave his rep a boost when she told E! News that he was her favorite on-screen smooch during a 2014 interview. The LaBeouf lip lock was a topic Fox found herself talking about quite often while promoting the original film. She told Collider in 2007, We spent an entire day shooting a kissing scene, which didn't even make it into the movie, which makes me think he set that up. After she and LaBeouf kissed again in the 2009 sequel, Transformers Revenge of the Fallen, Fox revealed that, behind the scenes, she was not experiencing the real-life version of a perfectly polished, carefully orchestrated romantic scene. She told USA Weekend, It's always weird. That's not something that's ever romantic or sexy. Doing an onset kiss is just strange, and knowing Shia so well makes it even more strange. But she affirmed that LaBeouf was an excellent kisser. The actress's very real chemistry helped make their kisses so memorable. LaBeouf told details in 2011 that he and Fox had a fling while shooting the first Transformers film. And Fox confirmed this years later on Watch What Happens Live. I love him. I've never been, like, really quiet about that. I, I love him. Yeah.
Anne Hathaway got to experience a lot of different kissing techniques when director Gary Marshall set out in search of the guy who would believably make Mia Thermopolis' foot pop again in The Princess Diaries 2, Royal Engagement. In 2004, Hathaway told the Los Angeles Times that she had to screen test with numerous actors before Chris Pine landed the part, saying, "'Don't get me wrong, I love kissing, but the idea of having to kiss 12 different people that I've just met in one 10-hour period of time is a little much for me." Hathaway had mastered the art of making out with a relative stranger by the time she filmed the 2007 biographical romance Becoming Jane. She'd also established some boundaries she expected her co-stars to honor while shooting kissing scenes. The reason her on-screen love interest, James McAvoy, earned her admiration when they had to film such a scene wasn't because of the kiss itself. It was because she didn't have to have an awkward conversation with him about her perfectly reasonable demands beforehand. Hathaway told British radio station Heart, "...he turned to me and said, "'Closed mouths, no tongue. That's what I normally say to people, so it was a pleasure working with him. Hathaway also revealed that she just keeps her teeth clamped firmly together if an actor ignores her wishes, quote, "...so they end up licking at your gums and teeth." When Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck kiss for the first time, the moment was captured on film. But we can't blame Lopez for not considering it her best on-screen snog. It's turkey time. Huh? Gobble, gobble. Talk about pouring some ice-cold, unappetizingly congealed gravy on the mood before their love scene even begins in Geely. Lopez's job has also called for her to make out with Matthew McConaughey, George Clooney, and Jason Statham. But when she appeared on Watch What Happens Live in 2014, she revealed that her favorite kiss was with her an unfinished Life co-star, Josh Lucas. It took place in the backseat of a truck, which could have made the scene tricky to execute. Lopez said that she and Lucas weren't exactly comfortable before the cameras began rolling, but their nerves may have actually been to their benefit. We just jumped on each other, like when right. they said action, and then he was like, that was really good. I was like, yeah, that was really good. Okay, cool. Wow. No, we're good. When Lucas appeared on Watch What Happens Live, he confirmed that he thought the kiss was incredible. It was so incredible, in fact, that it was deemed too steamy to keep in the movie. They needed to get it a rating that was a little more PG. It was fantastic. When Extra asked Jada Pinkett Smith about her kiss with her Gotham co-star, Mackenzie Lee, in 2014, it reminded the actor of another time she locked lips with a fellow female star. You know I got to kiss Monica Bellucci. That was the best on-screen kiss I ever had. Their memorable smooch appeared in the video game Enter the Matrix. But just one year later, Smith told E.T. that another actor had supplanted Bellucci as her favorite co-star to kiss. Unfortunately, the pitch-perfect, spicy scene she and Elizabeth Banks filmed for Magic Mike Double XL ended up on the cutting room floor. In the film, Pinkett and Banks' respective characters, Roman Paris, are major moguls in the male stripper world. It's quickly established that the women have a history worthy of a prequel film when they greet each other warmly by touching foreheads and clasping hands. It's actually a pivotal scene, as Rome uses their relationship to gain entry to the stripping convention where the male dancer's grand finale performance takes place. The kissing footage would have made it even more blatantly obvious to filmgoers that they had romantic feelings for each other. I was very mad that they took it out of the movie. The girls always give me the best kisses. Monica Bellucci gave me a good kiss, Elizabeth Banks gave me an even better one. Sharon Stone has kissed Michael Douglas, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and Leonardo DiCaprio for the sake of her art. But one actor's ability to execute a swoon-worthy smooch is untouchable in her book. It probably helped that she had a massive crush on Robert De Niro before she kissed him in Martin Scorsese's 1995 movie Casino. In a 2020 appearance on Watch What Happens Live, Stone said of the Hollywood icon, "...Bob was far and away the best kisser." There was so much attached to it, but I was just so madly in love with him as an actress to start with. According to Stone, being romanced by De Niro on screen was so sublime that it made every kissing scene she shot afterward seem meh. He probably could have hit me in the head with a hammer and I would have been like, oh yeah! De Niro remained oblivious about Stone's kiss bliss until he was made aware of her feelings during a virtual appearance on Live with Kelly and Ryan in 2020. Well, I'm flattered. I never knew that. She never told me. Stone also kissed Joe Pesci in Casino, a moment film magazine readers voted the worst love scene of all time in 2004. Stone told Variety, however, that Pesci was also deserving of praise, as he and De Niro both treated her with the utmost respect.